All right, so in this video, we will actually just change up our theme so that it loads a lot of these things from a database. And I will actually show you how you can insert into the database and how you can load from it. Uh, so basically, a lot of things in PHP, uh, MySQL, all bundled up together. Uh, so that you are actually able to create a lot of uh, websites with some sort of functionality like this one. Um, usually like blog sites, right? They need to just load the blo blog posts um, and somehow store new blog posts. But that's about it, right? So you should be able to uh, create a blog website from scratch uh, after watching this video. Okay, so without any further ado, let's just get into it. Uh, so what we will do is just uh, we will go and install the XAMPP, uh, which is just some sort of localhost server, uh, because what we will need is run a PHP script. Uh, and PHP script has to run on some server. It cannot just run on your uh, computer or something like that. It needs to run on a server. So you will need to install some sort of, some sort of a localhost server. So that means you will have just a program that will uh, basically simulate a server uh, on your uh, computer, right? That's this XAMPP. Um, and there, there is in this package, there are much more services, right? So there is like the Apache server. So this is for the uh, website hosting. Then we have like some sort of databases and PHP. Uh, so this is the only program that you will need in order to create any website uh, on your local host, right? With PHP scripts and with uh, databases. So uh, I, f I highly recommend you just download it and install it. There is nothing uh, nothing too complicated about the installation process. It's just very straightforward. Uh, just a you know clicking installation, easy. You should you should be able to do that on your own. So feel free to pause the video and um, install this. Uh, okay. So once you are done, you should be able to have some sort of XAMPP uh, folder, right? So X A M P P folder uh, on your device. So uh, somehow locate it uh, and then go to the HD docs, right? So HD docs and in here, every folder represents sort of a page uh, that you have. So for example, this theme cell is actually a page uh, that I have opened right here. Okay, so localhost theme cell. And another thing that I just want to notice is that I also got this XAMPP running. Okay, so if I just stop this thing from working, right, so I stop both of these services and reload it, uh, I will get an error, right, uh, because the local host is not running, right, the site can be reached. So if I just run this again, so I will just start it out um, and reload this whole thing or it will reload automatically. Uh, you can notice that currently it's running. Nice. Uh, so yeah, this is basically the folder, right? This is the name of the folder and it's just displaying it as a website. So it's just going to the index.html and displaying it as a root uh, sort of page. Okay, so with all of that being done, you should be ready to actually create databases and to create some sort of code. So in order to do that, if you want to create a database, you just want to go to localhost that slash php my admin. Okay, so you just want to go to localhost slash php my admin. Uh, and inside here, you can just create a new, uh, let me just change this to actually English so that you understand <laughs> what I what you see. Um, so yeah, inside here, you can actually create a new database. So if you just click on this new, it will create a new database that you can actually use uh, in your project. Uh, so the database name could be something like a, um, I don't know, like uh, this project is called uh, theme cell. So let's just name this theme cell. Uh, and then you want to define the har set. By default, it's set to Swedish because uh, uh, it was actually created by some Swedish guy. Um, so if you want this, you can probably you probably want to change this to uh, the general, right? UTF-8 general, uh, and this should mean that it will work with different sorts of languages, uh, not only with uh, some sort of Swedish, Latin uh, sort of uh, uh, character encoding. Okay, uh, so make sure to check this. Uh, this is often the some mistake that beginners make. They just pick whatever they want. 
but this is fairly important because if you pick a wrong, wrong encoding, uh, it would mean that your PHP script would display uh, some sort of wrong car sets, right? Uh, so you definitely want to pick something like this and hit the create button. Uh, so this should create a new database so there we have it now what you can do is just create tables in here so let's just create a table called author wow something like this right author um, and inside here you can specify the number of columns but i will just leave that up to you and in here you can just pick uh, you can just say something like id so you can just name the columns of the of the table, right? So every author will have ID, uh, it will have its name, and then it will have its email, uh, and then, um, I don't know, what else? Uh, so yeah, I think that this is enough. Uh, so you obviously want to change these, right? Name is not an integer, and email is not an integer, it's just a text. And you definitely want to select something like a primary uh, primary key or uh, I don't know how, how you want to yeah primary key so some column as a primary key so something that's unique and it represents a sort of one unique identifier of a author and this ID column is usually used for that uh, so inside where is it yeah inside this index you just pick primary uh, so it will ask you whether you want to add the index you say just go and then save this thing and hopefully it will work yeah there it is so we've created a new table called author uh, with these three columns in it uh, then we can just uh, create a, once again a new table called um, post or something like that right and it will have once again an id now it can have uh, some sort of name of the post right or title so title wow what's happening title yeah title uh, then you usually want to have something like a sale seo title uh, so this is just the title that is displayed in the url okay um, it's better for the seo obviously uh, then you have some sort of content usually with uh, just like paragraphs stuff like that you know the actual content of the of the post uh, right now we are running out of space so let me just add a couple of more columns where well, this button Okay, uh, so what you want to do also is just define the author, right? And this author will be just an integer. This will be just an ID uh, that's referencing to a author in this table, okay? Um, okay, because we can have multiple authors uh, having... So one author can create multiple posts, right? That sort of makes sense. Um, all right, uh, and let me also change these to text. This will be also text and this will be also text. Uh, then we can probably add the date when this was published. And uh, usually you just want to pick a, um, where is it? Timestamp. Okay, so timestamp of a type and the default is the current timestamp. So uh, this will be automatically set when we add a new row into the table. Uh, this will be set the date will be set to the actual time and date when the row was added okay um, so i think that this is for now uh enough uh, we can just use the id uh, for example you probably want to add some sort of image path and stuff like that uh, but i will just use the id for that so we will have just id.jpg as a the preview image okay uh, so with all of that, uh, we will just save it. Oh, I forgot to put change this ID to primary. So that was my bad. We need to change it and you can edit it out very simply. So you can just select the column and you can just say, hey, I want this to be primary and computer says no problem. And you can see this small key in here. That means it's primary. Um, and we also want this to be auto increment. Uh, I'm actually not sure whether it will by default currently. I think that it will. When you set it as a uh, primary key, uh, it will be auto increment or or not. Yeah. So let's just ch check this ch check this box. Uh, yeah. So right right now it auto increments. So sorry. Need to go to this change and check this box. So currently it auto increments. So basically each time we insert a new row, it will just look up the uh, largest ID in the table and it will add one to it okay so it will 
auto increment. Uh, so I will just change the structure of the author. So I will just once again change this to so that it also auto increments like the previous one. So auto, auto increments, save. Okay, so I think that these tables are currently pretty much ready. Uh, pretty much ready for what we have. Uh, also, let me just actually add a category for this post. Um, yeah, so the category can either be just a a string, but um, sometimes maybe a post have multiple categories. Okay, so a I don't know. You have a post that's in the category of programming and also in uh, like category of Python or whatever, right? So when you have something like that. Uh, you probably want to just create a new table for this. So you will just create a new table called uh, category and inside here we will have the ID of the category and let's just say name. You can also add a SEO title of the category. I will leave that up to you. Uh, so these both will be just text. Okay, and this one will be auto increment. So inside here this will be primary. Uh, go and yeah, if I just, wow, how do I, yeah, there it is. <laughs> so this is where we can just slide and there is the auto increment right here. So if I just check that and hit save, uh, it should be primary and it should auto increment. Uh, so uh, yeah, there it is, auto increment, it's primary, and then we have other name and SEO title. And let's just create another table uh, that will represent that this post have this category. Okay, so let's just create a new table uh, let's just call this one has category and we will just say post have a category and both of these will be integers because they are IDs okay so both of these are actually IDs uh, and uh, this will just be ID of a post having category of this thing of, of some other ID right and inside here we will just have a category let me just actually insert some some uh, random category that I will think of. So uh, ID will be auto increment. We don't have to fill this thing. Uh, and inside here we can just name, uh, for example, name will be bootstrap. And the SEO title will be just bootstrap like this. And we will just insert this whole thing. Uh, and we will have just one row in here. Okay. And the ID is one. So the has category could be something like post one have the category of one. Okay, so that would mean that post with like some sort of particular post in here uh, have the category of of uh, bootstrap. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Uh, this is definitely a little bit advanced stuff. Um, I would highly recommend, especially these SQL um, SQL queries might get complicated. We will need to use joins and stuff like that. Uh, so um, if you already know these, then great. You can just continue watching. Uh, if you don't know what's happening, I would probably recommend you just watch some sort of uh, uh, beginner's introduction to SQL uh, and like table creations and, and database creation, um, how to actually create databases, stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, if, if these things doesn't make sense. Uh, okay, but otherwise, if, if all of this does make sense, then great, and we can just move on uh, to the actual PHP scripts. So let me just create a new PHP script uh, that will just take care of the inserting into this database. So what we will have is let's just create a new folder in here. Let's just call this one admin like this. And in here we will have just a new file called um, let's just call this one insert uh, insert post. Okay, that, this could be HTML uh, because we will just have a basic form for this thing. So what I can do is just uh, simply copy paste this whole thing in there. Okay, so this just this this is basically just a form. Uh, that, and inside here we can actually send right in here the action wouldn't be the mail but it would be just I don't know some URL to the script so inside here let's also create a folder inside this admin folder called uh, PHP 
and inside here we will actually have our script uh, so let's just use a insert uh, post script dot php okay uh, and inside here we will actually write the code that will insert this whole thing into our uh, database uh, cool um all right so let me just change these things uh, so this will not uh, be executing the mail.php but it will be executing the script that's in on this page in the folder admin and then in the folder php and it's called uh, insert post right insert post so this will actually be inserting a post nice so let me just close this thing and change uh change a little bit of these things so i will just make it larger so that you can see this properly um all right and instead of email <laughs> it will probably say something like a title right uh, i can probably fast forward so that uh, so that you don't have to watch me just changing titles and stuff like that edit things out and uh, when i open it up in my browser so i will just go to the path that's uh, uh, that represents this file uh, as you can see there is just a form uh, with these columns sort of uh, and this is usually somewhere in the administration part of the website uh, so this is actually um, this is not actually not accessible to the user uh, so we can sort of assume a little bit uh, that uh, this is just something that will be shown to some sort of admin and he will not write something like some sort of like you know like some sort of crazy stuff in here um and yeah let me also change this not the type of email but just type of text right uh so yeah but we can expect that um the admin will just write the actual post so we don't have to actually check whether uh, this title makes sense, whether this sale title is actually valid and stuff like that. Um, so I will not do that just in order to save some time. I just want to say that you probably just want to do that. You probably want to check even though the admin might make a mistake and he just might uh, just put in here some sort of um, invalid SEO title, uh, stuff like that. So you probably want to check, but in order to save some time I want uh, and yeah so I will just move on directly to this insert post script and yeah in here what we will first of all do is just we will define a database and uh, let's see yeah we probably don't want to do that on our own yeah we don't want to do that in class because that for, for this smaller project, it wouldn't make sense to actually create a class called database and in there just do the connecting and execution. Um, for some larger project, it might make sense. But I will not just, uh, I will try to make things as simple as possible. So the first thing that we will do is just get the data. So uh, we want to get the data from this uh, sort of input uh, as you can so notice the method is actually post so what we will do is just create a variable called title and inside here we will just take the whatever is in the post global array uh, and have the title uh, name right so the input uh, with the name being title uh, will be sent where the method post right so this is the the value of this input is actually in the array of post under the keyword of title right under the keyword of the name of the input uh, cool so then we have a seo title uh, so once again we will just target the post and inside here we will just use the seo uh, because that's how i named the input uh, then we have the content and then we have like categories um, for these categories, you probably want to do some sort of um, user intuitive GUI, right? Uh, somehow when the user can just add and remove sort of text, uh, that might work better. Uh, but for this sort of smaller blog, I just try to simplify things a little bit. So the content of, uh, so the uh, category will be just uh, number of the categories uh, with uh, space right so there will be like 
uh, if it is like in category one, right? If I write one in here, it means it's in the category of bootstrap, right? If I do space and two, it means it's also in the category of two that we don't have yet in the database, okay? So stuff like that. Uh, yeah, but anyway, we will also get the content and we will also get the category, right? So category, and we can maybe just put a comment uh, in here just so that we know what we are expecting. So post category, and we can just say that should be like some uh, example, could be something like one, two, four, and other, right? Uh, so this is a valid sort of input for this category post. Nice. So then what we will do is actually connect to a database. So inside here, we will actually use in MySQLi connect. And this is just a function that will actually connect to the database uh, that we've created in the uh, in here right so this is our database this theme cell is our database and inside here we have just a couple of tables okay so let's just connect to it so when we want to connect to a database we actually need four things the first one is the host and this is just the local host right so the host name is just the name of the server where the database is for now for us it's just a ho local host then we have the username okay so i will just put a user in here and then I will just put a password in here because these are the three things that we need. And lastly, we have the database name, which is the theme cell, right? So that's like this whole thing, theme cell. Um, so if the user and password is correct, it should, this should actually create a connection uh, with the database and store it, store the connection into this variable. And then we can use this variable in order to actually execute some sort of queries over the database. Uh, so uh, right now you are probably asking what's the user and what's the password. So if you just go into the, um, into your table and go to this privileges, you can just create accounts, right? Um, and you can just set passwords to them and stuff like that. Uh, so I've already created a couple of these, right? If you just click on this add user account, you just uh, say that the username and just say some sort of password to it. And then like basically check all of these privileges. Okay. So that you can do anything. Um, and you can just hit the go and it will create a new account with which you can log in so that you can use basically to you know, access the database. Uh, but what I just did uh, is I've already have a couple of these and if I'm not mistaken, the username should be black black and the password should be full bar like this. Uh, hopefully this will work. So uh, yeah, with when this is done, actually, you can just connect to the database and then you can just execute a query. So what I will just do is just use MySQLi but instead of connect, I will just put the execute in here. And this will just execute a query. So we will need the database over which we want to execute a query. And then we need the actual query. And the query could be variable or string. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, you usually probably want to just use some sort of variable in here. So query. And inside here, you want to change the string to reference the variable right but this will actually execute the query uh hopefully what's what's going on yeah of course we don't have a semicolon in here so it's yelling at us yeah but otherwise this is all right so uh you're probably asking what is the query right <laughs> and uh, uh the query is just an sql query uh that you can use um i will not be explaining the basics of sql feel free to pause the video and just go to some other tutorial talking about the SQL basics. Uh, feel free to let me down, let me know down below in the comment section if you want me to do a tutorial on SQL, uh, but I will not explain SQL in this video. Um, so what I will do is just, I will insert this straight away. So I will just use the insert uh, into, then we need to define the table. So this is just the post. 
right? We want to insert into the post. Uh, then we have a list of um, columns. So if you just go to this post, uh, so we have title, SEO title, uh, content, and author that we want to fill. So we will have a title, SEO title, uh, content, and author that we want to fill. Okay, we want to fill all of these. And then we want to fill them with some sort of values, right? So I will just use the values keyword. And inside here, I will actually put these variables. So inside here we have title. And uh, yeah, of course, then we have other, um, other, other variables, right? So SEO, right? And these quotation marks are because we need we need these otherwise it wouldn't work we would get a syntax error um, we need these because it's a string okay uh, then we have what do we have content and lastly we have an author but we don't know what is an author right if I put a author variable in here it will not know what is author right because we didn't define it anywhere in here so what I will do is just use the post uh, post and inside here we will just expect that somehow this form will be able to send us the author ID. Okay. Uh, so if otherwise uh, it should probably work. Uh, if I just go back to this form, uh, you should be able to just copy paste some some input. And inside here, you can just, or not inside here, inside here, you can just say that the name is the author and the type is a hidden. So this will be set by PHP by default. And let's just say that uh, the value, right? You can set the value attribute and this will just say that the author ID is the one or whatever, right? Uh, so we will set this via PHP because we will create a session variable. For example, we will just know um, the author that is currently locked in into the system and who is creating the post and we will just put his ID right here. Okay, so for now I will just put one in there um, and actually try it out and see whether it actually works. So if I put, I've added some data in here, you can notice that there is also the category. Um, I sort of forgot to handle the category. We can do it later on. So if I just hit the insert, it should run the script. Okay, and we get an error. So the access is denied. Uh, all right, so if you get some sort of, okay, yeah, and of course we get an error also in there, but mm, the access is denied. So let me just see, <laughs> I've probably put wrong credentials. All right, so if I fix these things up, right, so, so that the credentials are actually correct, we will just get another warning uh, just saying MySQL execute expects exactly. Um, yeah, of course. So we want to put a query in here. So MySQL I uh, query. Uh, that should work. <laughs> I've been using my own database and in there I have some sort of functionality named execute. So that's why I'm, I'm just used to using something like that. But if I reload the page again, we get no warnings. And if we take a look into our database and actually reload this thing, uh, we should be able to see some posts in here. So there is a post with the ID being one, uh, with the title being this is a test post, SEO title being this is a test post and this is test content. Uh, so the author is also set to one. So it somehow magically knows uh, that we've set the value to one and the data is set to the default sort of value uh, that we've had. Uh, so right now, let me actually handle the, handle the category for this thing. So we have a string, right? When we are sending the form, if I go back, no, not here. If I go back here, yeah, there it is. We have a category and this is just a string. Uh, and we want to put into this database, in, into this table, we want to put the ID of this post that we've just inserted um, and this uh, the IDs of these categories that we've just specified in the input, right? So 
what we will do is just inside here we want to select uh, the uh, we want to select the um, the the post that we've just created so inside here I will just actually change the query variable uh, to just select um, and let's just select the ID from uh, the post table where the um, the let's just say the SEO because the SEO needs to be uh, needs to be unique so we might actually just uh, add the unique uh, characteristic for it but just later on uh, so where the SEO is equal to the SEO that we have and of course this shouldn't be a variable it should be just the name of the column so this is a SEO title right right so like this SEO title so where the SEO title is equal to the SEO variable so this is just a a string variable and we know that there should be only one post with this SEO and we are getting the ID of that post so what I will do is just use once again the MySQL query but these today right now I will just put it into a variable called result so the result of that query the query have some sort of result right um, and um, I will store that into a variable and we can then work with that result right so we can just say MySQLI fetch array and the result is actually something like a table okay uh, and the this fetch array basically means that it will just take uh, get me the first row from that table okay sort of uh, so currently I can just put for example something like row in here and we can maybe just print it out on the screen uh, just so that you can actually see it but yeah let's just use uh, we can then uh, this is just an array basically containing like in pairs of if I would put a uh, I don't know row uh, if I put like ID and title in here uh, on the row on index 0 there would be the ID on row on index 1 there would be title and you can also target them by like this so for example like title like this okay uh, so what I will do is just use the 0 and remove this title because I know that there will be just the ID so this should print out uh, ID is and then then some sort of ID okay this should print it out on the screen uh, nice so then when we have the ID so let's just have a variable for it called post ID and this will be just this row uh, we can just actually explode uh, this category string that we've got so that we have an array of integers okay so what we will do is just uh, use like mm, category array variable and this will be just explode and this will just you can notice right it uses a delimiter and a string right and it splits a string by a string okay so we will just split it by a space and we want to split the category string so where it is category string like this and what this should do is it should create right if I put it into comment it should create an array that have one two three and other right or, or four if the string looks like this thing okay but basically it will split this into an array where each element is just the category ID and now we just want to loop through this whole array and we want to loop through these elements and insert for each and every element a row into this has category okay so what we will do is just loop for each uh, category array so category array there is the name of the array then there is the S keyword uh, and then something like an element or whatever however you want to call this uh, and then we can just define for example some variable called query um, and inside here it will just say insert into uh, has category and uh, it will just say uh, that uh, the names will be post and category like this and uh, the values uh, will be just an array uh, saying the post ID so post ID 
and also the element, right? So element. And that should be it. So if I just uh, do the query, right? So if I just do the MySQLi query, um, we can just maybe change this to query. Yeah, and let's see whether that actually works out. So if I go back here, change this to two, and let's just say that this is a post of two, and I will just insert, yeah, of course, this needs to be also changed. Uh, and let's just insert it and see what happens. Okay, so the ID is two, so that works out just fine. So we got the ID. And if I reload this has category, uh, there should be a cate two categories. Yeah, there it is. So we have a post with the ID of two, right? That's the post that we've just inserted. And the categories of one and two, okay? Um, so that works and that's basically pretty much it for the inserting of a post. Uh, what we want to do next is just handle the author, but I will do that uh, at the total end of this video. Uh, so yeah, so this is just the inserting of a post. We probably just want to put something like a header uh, location in here. Just saying, I don't know. You probably just want to check whether uh, whether these things just worked out, right? You want to check whether the query uh, is actually worked out, right? Otherwise, it will return a boolean, right? So it will be false. You can just put like if uh, if this query uh, worked out, uh, else uh, just go to some header, or some lo location, just saying that we have a error in here because it can happen. Okay, it can happen that. Um, something just goes wrong with your database, okay? Uh, especially if you don't do like MySQL I escape, uh, you definitely want to do just real escape strings, stuff like that, just to be protected against SQL in injection, mm, which is very common attack uh, on a website uh, that is not protected. Uh, so for example, if you have like um, some sort of met author that wants to delete your whole database, um, he can do it while just sending a form with a proper text, right? In here, he can just put into a title, he can just put some sort of string uh, that will delete your whole database, okay? If you don't do MySQL uh, escaping of the characters. So, uh, but I cannot explain this in, in one video. Uh, this is just a topic for a whole another lecture about like one hour long. So uh, feel free to let me down in the comment section. Uh, let me know whether you want me to make a video on this uh, problem. Uh, but for now, I will just continue with this video. So I will just go to uh, localhost and um, let's just go back to this whole thing, right? So when I go back to this insert post, probably Oh uh, yeah, so let's just paste it in here. Nice. Uh, good, so that's basically inserting of the post taken care of. So what we want to do now is just uh, handle the loading of the post. All right, so I've inserted a couple of posts and um, let me just go to the index.html and change this to index.php. So let's just rename it into index.php. And we will use something called inline PHP in order to display uh, parts of our web page, okay? And inside here, we probably don't want to use the admin for it. We just want to maybe create a new folder, but not inside the admin, uh, inside this whole project. And let's just call this one PHP. Um, and yeah, inside of this folder, we probably want to create some uh, sort of getter. So let's just call this one get post and that PHP. And this will be just a script uh, inside here. This will be just a script where we will define a function for actually getting the, uh, the posts. So inside here, there will be just a function. So function, <laughs> sorry. So function. Um, where we will actually get these posts. Okay, so let's just call this one maybe uh, get main uh, post. All right, stuff like that. 
Um, yeah, so this will be just the post for the main website, okay? Um, and what we will do is just, uh, well, first of all, let me just close this thing and let me maybe uh, copy paste a couple of lines from here. So we will definitely connect to the database and we will definitely need some sort of query, but I will write that uh, from scratch. So we will connect to the database, uh, then we will query and we will select uh, all of our posts. Okay, so we will just use the, uh, let's just define a variable called query and inside here there will be just select um, everything. We want to select everything about the post uh, from the post table uh, and we want to limit it out so that it have like, let's just say 20, um, 20, uh, only 20 posts, right? Only the first 20 posts, because uh, you can imagine that we have like table that contains thousands of posts, but we don't want to display thousands of posts on the index page, right? We want to display only the latest 20 posts, right? Uh, and also we will just order it by, so order by, um, and let's just order it by date. So, and let's also use the descending order, right, for it. So the newest articles will be, 20 newest articles will be selected. All right, so now what we will do is we will execute it. So we will have just a result and this will be just uh, a MySQLi query, right? So a result of a query. And this query will take in the database and the query variable. Okay, like this. Nice. So we will just, in this result, we will have a table that will represent those last 20 posts. And what we want to do now is just, we want to loop um, while we have a row inside of the table. And we can just set the row variable to be equal to MySQLi fetch, so fetch uh, array uh, from this result. So this function will basically take care of everything. So this while loop basically means uh, loop uh, for every row in the result table, okay? And inside here, we can just refer to this row variable as to the row in the table, okay? It's pretty straightforward. And what we will do in here is just, we will echo out, echo out the, the post, the article, right? So what I will do is just, I will go to this index.php and go all the way down, where is it, in here. And in here you can notice that we have articles, right? So this represents one article post. So I will just copy paste it in here. Okay, uh, so this is what we will echo out. You need to put semicolon at the end of the line. And in here we just need to change a couple of things. So uh, first of all, what we will need to change is in here we need to put the ID from the row. So we will just do row and then in here I will just target the ID, right? Nice. Uh, the alt, right, the alternative text is probably something like a, like title. I would use probably title for it, uh, title of the post, right? So we've selected the title from the post table. Um, then in here uh, we probably want to remove this and just once again use the title. So I will just copy paste it and put a title in here. Um, then we have the date. So inside here, I will just put the date and we can format it out so that it looks a little bit better. So, but we will do that later on. So I will just put the date in here. And then lastly, we have categories. Okay. And here is a little bit of problem because uh, we have a lot of categories and this has category, right? There could be multiple badges of this and we don't have them selected in here. So what we want to do is for each and every row, we would like to select them. Okay. So in here, I will just put, let's just use, we can use the query variable for this thing and we can put a select um, everything from or select the name from uh, the category where uh, the category, right? So the has category, we need to use the has, has category. 
uh, that category and this needs to be like this Wow, so th this get this is getting a little bit complicated. So first of all, we will uh, obviously need to join this. So we will use inner join, inner join, and there should be two ends. So inner join like this. So we will join the category into the has category table. This is really uh, a more advanced stuff based on the category ID being equal to the uh, has. Um, yeah, has category, uh, has category, category. This is really advanced stuff, and this is pretty much the most complicated query uh, that you can find uh, in this whole block, uh, I think. So, what we will do is just we will take this category table. Okay, I will try to walk you through this. We want to select this name, but we want to select only name the names of these categories that are connected to the post in the has, po has category table. Okay, so we, what we will do is the inner join basically connects these tables together and it will just connect these two tables and instead of this ID, you can imagine that you have the whole rows from the category, okay, where, the, where this ID is being equal to the category ID. So this category row being equal to the ID row in the category, okay. And then, once you have done this, you can just check uh, whether the post, not the category, is actually equal uh, to the post ID. And we have stored this into the row ID, right? So we've basically, <laughs> while this query, I, I know that this is uh, probably really complicated for you if you are a beginner. Uh, I highly recommend you watch, for example, some course on SQL. Um, but we've basically just selected all the categories for the ID of our post, okay? And then once again, we can just loop through this. So I will just copy paste this, uh, but you need to obviously change this not so that it's not row, but something like category. So for every category that is somewhere in the result, we obviously cannot use the um, uh, result variable. So I will just use get result. And we obviously need to execute this whole thing. So I will just copy paste it. And in here we need to change this to get result. Okay, so get result variable. And we will uh, just query it so that we have a category. And inside here we can just put the uh, categories or something like that. Um, and this will be just a like a string that we will display in here instead of this whole thing. Okay, so we will for every uh, single category, we will just have a string of categories. So I will just concatenate uh, this whole thing. And inside here, it will just be the name of it. So there should be like um, category. So category. Uh, and then we will just refer to the um, where is it? Name, of course. So name, and let's just close this thing, and let's also add these concatenation signs. So these dots, right here. Um, so yeah, these things can get very complicated, especially if you are a beginner. Um, but yeah, th this will basically just say that this category string will be a string that will contain all of the categories, we need to obviously set it to nothing in here. Uh, and with this loop, we will just loop through all of these categories, add them, and then we just want to display that string. So inside here, I will just concatenate the string of cate categories like this. Wow, so this is actually it. This is actually how we can get all of the posts. So if I just go into the index.php and in this section I will just remove all of these I can just remove them, I can just completely delete all of these because they are useless to us right now and inside here I will just use a php tag um, and I will just first of all we need to require that, uh, that file so I will just use require once and 
where is the file we need to go to the um, PHP folder and then the get post so what I will do is just go to the PHP folder oh this needs to be in string so PHP folder and then the get post file so we've basically just imported this whole uh, file and then we've used we will use this get main post function okay so get main post function we will just call it and this will take care of everything so this line of code should get from this script uh, those last 20 uh, posts so if I just go to the whole document and inside here I will just delete this thing and go to the index page hit enter it should just display free posts uh, that have the title or it will just get an error so it failed to open the stream uh, because there is no path like this okay um, mm -hmm. all right let's see of course it needs to be .php of course so let's change it and let's reload it again all right so there is something wrong with our SQL right you can notice then on line 7 the MySQLi fetch array uh, is having some sort of problem so on line 7 that's this one so there is something wrong with this whole thing so from post um, you want to limit by 20 and order by date uh, yeah of course so the limit needs to be behind this whole thing if I'm not mistaken let's see if I just put it at the end and reload the page there it is there it is there is there are our our posts um, yeah uh, for some reason we don't have the tag in here or maybe we, well there is something just wrong no that's that's actually correct right uh, yeah we didn't add that but you can notice that these two categories are actually working right because you can notice that this is the post 2 and we have these two categories so if I go in here you can notice that the post 2 have the category of 1 and 2 and if you go to the category names uh, you can notice that the category 1 is the bootstrap and the category of 2 is the HTML5 so this whole thing is actually currently working we are loading posts from our database it's as simple as that uh, you probably just want to play with uh, how you display this this sort of date um, so you can just maybe trim it um, but otherwise I think that this is pretty all right so in order to actually fix the date um, we can just um, where is it yeah there is the date we can just use the um, the substring for this thing and we can just put a string uh, then the start so from what index we want to start so from zero and then the length and we want the first 10 characters uh, so if I save it and reload it uh, there should be a substring so it should be just the date yeah there it is I think that this looks actually pretty pretty all right uh, we can maybe probably put a little bit of margin in here so let's just put a margin from left of one I know that this is not about PHP but I just cannot stand to look at this whole thing uh, without margin there it is a little bit of margin and it looks much better yeah but otherwise I think that this looks actually pretty all right I think that we are actually done with this so let's just move on into the part uh, where we will just log in okay so let me just create a new form uh, that will be just login form so I will just copy paste this contact uh, and inside here I will just rename it to login.php uh, and of course in here we need to just um, yeah you probably want to change it but I will just change these things this form so that it's just like this okay so we have just the uh, we have just the email and then we have the password right so the name is password like this um, and obviously I want to change this whole thing so password um, I will leave that up to you once again and the action should be login.php 
and we should probably want to put it all of this into a PHP folder. So PHP login PHP. Um, nice. So uh, what we will do is actually with this whole thing, uh, we pretty much have the uh, pretty much have the form ready. So if I just go to login.php, uh, there should be a page. Yeah, there it is. And even though it says contact us, right? There should be something like login. But otherwise, I think that this is pretty all right. So login. And let me just create the login script. All right, so I will go to this PHP folder and inside here I will create a new file called login.php. Easy as that. Uh, now, inside here I will just create a new PHP tag and let me actually go back to our database because we need to add some stuff to our author. So the author currently doesn't have only name and email, uh, it also needs to have, uh, so let me just add another column uh, that will be the password so password like this and it will be just in text so text save it and yeah so we've just added a row to this so it says just name email and password good so what we will actually do is okay I will close this whole thing up close this one close this thing go to this get post and just copy the uh, these two lines so we will just connect to our database and we will select everything from user or not just everything we just want the id and not the user but author right so author table uh, and we want to put a var in here so i will just get rid of this whole thing and we want to actually get the data so inside here we will just have the uh, username and this will be just the post. Uh, I think that we've called this one mail, right? I'm not sure actually, so I will just go back. Uh, stupid me, I've closed this, right? Uh, yeah, it's name, mail and password. Okay, so I'll just copy paste it. There it is. So, uh, username and then password. And uh, obviously in here, we also want to use a post. And inside here, we want to name this password. Now, this is not something that can be used only by an admin, right? A normal person could probably be able to locate this sort of file and actually send a form. And if we are not protected against some sort of SQL injection, stuff like that, um, our database could be ruined. So what we will do is in here, I will put real escape or mysqli real escape string, right? So mysqli real escape string. I'm not sure why it isn't recommending me these things. Uh, so why the, the suggestion doesn't work, not sure. So maybe something wrong with the extension. But basically, uh, this will take care of everything for us. So this will take care that uh, of the problem uh, that the user might actually do something harmful to our database okay like delete every author or delete every post so we need to real escape both of these and we basically should be able to put this every time we are accepting some input okay this should be everywhere uh yeah but anyway um in this where clause we will say just where the uh, mail i think it was mail where is it email okay we probably want to keep things consistent so i will just change the title of this thing so change it to um let's just change it to mail not email and save it okay so we will just say where the mail is equal to a string that is containing the um what is it username okay so you can just name it mail um that's just better name for it right because it is a mail cool so uh let's just close this this thing and let's also use the end clause right we want to select a user with the username being this stuff and uh the password being other stuff i'm not sure why it's like yelling at me what's going on unexpected 
All right. So we just close this whole thing, open up a new one. I'm not sure why, what's the problem here. If I delete it, it's still yelling at me. Okay. Uh, I probably needed to save this thing. Yeah. Stupid me. But anyway, uh, inside here, how we call this one? Password. Nice. So uh, I can just paste it. Oh, no, paste it. So password. And uh, we will just say once again that it will be equal to some sort of hash of this password. Um, so you definitely need to somehow hash passwords. Once again, security reasons. I could do a whole video of like, I don't know, like 10 hours long about the all of the security stuff that you need to do with your website uh, if you don't want to get hacked. All right, so let me actually do it on this line. So I will just put a password in here and I will use the hash function. So this will hash out. Uh, first thing that we need is the algo. So we will use the SHA512. I'm not sure whether I can write it like this. We will find out probably soon enough. So the password like this. And so we want to hash this sort of string with this encryption, okay? And now we can actually insert it into our database. So pass like this. Uh, we probably could have done the same with this email. So let's just do that actually. Yeah, like this. And let's just save it. Uh, nice. So this is our query that should be able to select um, select a user from the database if the email and the password is correct. Now we can just put if uh, MySQL E number of rows, so num of rows of this, yeah, of the result. So we need to also execute it, right? So result, wow, well, result will be equal to uh, MySQL I query, uh, query like this one. And let's just put the database in here and the query variable. So query like this, and we will get the result. So there should be um, one row, exactly one row, right? So if we just check whether the, there is like some row, so result is just equal to one, that means there is just one user and he took, he, he added a like valid credentials, right? Valid email and valid password combination. So what we want to do now is just create a session for it. So session, uh, I will once again don't explain I, I will not explain what is a session um, uh, there's like a whole other video for what is a session right uh, I could create a whole other tutorial about what is a session um, and also about the security of of your sessions uh, because there's something like a session hijacking um, that means it can steal this session somebody can steal this session uh, for example by cross site scripting there is a lot of security to be done on this thing. Let's just put it this way. Okay, and what we will do is just put the MySQLi, uh, MySQLi uh, fetch array. So we will just fetch array and we will just take the result. So result like this and we will just pick the first element, right? So this is the ID. We'll pick the ID and we will set it as the uh, as our author, okay? And then we can just set the header. So for example, the header uh, will be at the location of, um, let's just go to that, uh, how was it called? We should be able to get there. Yeah, insert post, this thing. Right, so if we log in successfully, we will get, to, we will go to this insert post page uh, otherwise, otherwise we will just, so inside here, I will just put else, uh, we will just go to, I don't know, like we could create some sort of error page or uh, let's just go to login.php and actually add some sort of error uh, switch to be one. Very simple way to do this. Okay. All right. So now we also need to add some sort of author, right? Um, and because we need the hash function to actually work on this thing, uh, we also need to probably add a new script for it. So inside of this admin PHP, I will just add a new script called uh, add 
uh, author that php and this will add some sort of author to our page um i will just probably copy paste this this whole login script because we will just use a lot of the things in also in here so i will just paste it in here nice so we will log in uh, we will get the email the password of the author um there should be also the name uh, so i will just copy paste it for the name all right we still need to and actually i think that these need yeah i think that the hashing function needs to be defined like this one okay so let's let's change it and let's also change it in the login okay so in here it probably needs to be this one i'm not sure about it uh yeah but anyway uh, we will hash out the password and we will insert it so instead of select uh, we will just insert so in here i will just put insert into author table um into this row so there is like the name row mail row and then password row and we will insert these values so there is like all of them is pretty much string right so we will have the name string then we will have the email string uh then we will have the password right so uh password variable or no it's just pass okay and let's close this thing so this should actually insert name mail password into our database okay so then we can just let's just go to the insert post page if it worked out correctly um all right or we can just stay there whatever uh this is just really more of a uh, advanced functionality to this website okay so uh let's also create some sort of form for this uh, adding of the author so i will just create a new form in here so i will just copy paste this whole thing of insert post and name it insert author .html. nice and let me just change the form all right so i've edited everything out and currently we should be able to insert this author into the database uh, let me just check yeah so inside here it definitely needs to say insert author uh okay so this should insert the or sorry add sorry so there should be add author right the name of the script um so this script should get executed so let's just see uh i probably has to reload the page right yeah it, it goes to insert post all right so let me just test this thing out okay so name is test there's some sort of email and password so let's just insert it so we've called this alt at author and we get no errors with the script so it should add a author to our database so if i reload it uh there should be a author there it is so we have the test with this email and this password you can notice that this password uh, looks much differently than the password that we just inserted this because this is a hash okay so this is for the security reasons you never never ever never want to uh, store in your database the password in a plain text so you don't want to put in here the password in plain text never never ever don't do that okay uh so yeah good let me just try to log in now so if i just go to the theme cell and then to the login php page uh, i should be able to log okay so i've entered the credentials in here and let me hit the login button and see what happens i'm there i've logged in okay so i'm the user currently uh and i am logged in nice so now we can also just change the uh user value so make the author actually work so currently we know we stored the author with this where is the login script we don't need that uh, we don't need that we will need that but yeah inside here there's the login screen uh, script we've into the session author we've actually stored what author is actually locked in the id of the author so we can now use this variable in order to in here in order to actually know uh what sort of author is writing in here so we can just put php um 
yeah, of course we need to change this to PHP, right? But we can just put the session in here. We can just echo it out, right? So echo, echo this thing out. Uh, and if I change this insert post into insert post dot PHP, this whole thing should currently work. Yeah, there it is. We have this syntax highlight. So we will just echo out the ID of the author, okay? And also another thing that you definitely want to do when you are doing some sort of administration, you want to check if, uh, so first of all, you need to use a session start. So session uh, start. And this will basically check uh, or like it will just um, create the session or like <laughs> Uh, this is really hard to explain for a beginner if you you probably already know what session start means or you have no idea what it means and I cannot explain it just so simply in this video but it will basically make this session variable work okay very simply put um, so it will make the session variable work and then we can check if it is, is set so currently we basically check whether there is some author that is logged in because otherwise pretty much anyone can just go to this page right and pretty much anyone could insert a post so we need to check if this is if the author is not said so that means there is no author we definitely want the user to go away so we will just say header uh, location to something like http uh, localhost um, yeah, then we can just, we can just go to the login page, right? So this one, let me just copy paste it and let me just redirect this person to the login page. So login.php like this. Okay. Um, and you definitely want to do it also in your scripts. Okay. So if I save it, there should, yeah, there it is. You want to simply copy paste it even in here. Okay. Because somebody can locate this whole script. And he can just send these he can just send a formatted request pretty much every web developer with some experience can do this okay so you need to check whether there is actually a author in here logged in right or whether it's just some random person sending requests uh, and you definitely want to do that uh, also in the add admin right so you need to check in the where's the add admin script at uh, at author sorry in inside here you definitely need to check uh whether there is some author locked in uh who is actually adding this person right because otherwise other persons could just add um authors on their own right so once again you need to change this to php and just simply copy paste this to the top of your page right the complete top of your page and you should be pretty much good okay uh, you still cannot handle the session hijacking but we will not do that in this video all right so we what do we have we know how to insert a admin we can log in as a admin uh, we can add posts uh, we can display these posts so we are pretty much done uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe to this channel in order to see more. And yeah, I will see you next time. Bye.